Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock here with a Bible journaling page that's a really simple, straightforward one, a straightforward scene, but I'm going to give you some tips on how to create this and keep your page readable, and we'll talk about Earth Day a little bit too. So the sketch, which is located in the description down below if you'd like to try this scene yourself on a verse that means something to you about Earth Day, then you'll know that, notice that these are some really simple shapes here. You may need to adjust them based on how your Bible lays out the text page that you're using, but I'm really just doing some rounded triangles for mountains. I'm going to do a swoosh for the land, but I decided I'm not going to follow exactly where the swoosh is drawn on my sketch, but I wanted to get my sun and my rays in here before I moved the sketch. You can adjust sketches as much as you want. You can simplify them. I recommend doing that if you get a really complex sketch from somewhere. Absolutely. Simplify it as much as you need to to make it doable for you because you don't have to do fancy art in order to do Bible journaling. So I moved my little hillside up so that it fits right there in between that area so that I'm not covering up the, the wide text in that wide portion of the column. And the area of the land I thought was going to be a really good area to add some journaling. And I have another area that I thought I'd add as well because there's a verse in here that talks about the wind. And it says that the wind blows to the south and turns to the north. So I thought, why not use that verse to create a little swoosh of wind where I can also have another phrase included. And that's going to give me another space to add some journaling. Just erase a few of those lines that went through there. And now my sketch is pretty much complete. So you can see the sketch over there on the left hand side now. I'm making triangle trees, really simple ones. You don't have to draw every branch on a tree to convey that it's a line of trees. I'm just going to use a couple different greens to do it. I'm using luminance pencils, but you can use any kind of colored pencils to do your Bible journaling work with. I like colored pencils because they don't bleed through for one. And the other is that you can, as long as you don't color really, really heavy, you can see through them and especially if you make your color choices well. The colors that I'm using on the right hand side are going to be very contrasty colors, so purples and greens and go from darks to lights. If you do that on top of the text, the scripture text, it makes it hard to read when you're going from dark to light to dark to light. If you're trying to do a flood of color over top of the text, what I generally try to do is either make it a solid color or a you know very minimal in terms of the color difference or if I'm doing something like this with these sun rays I'm going to use a couple different yellows that's going to make it really limited contrast so that the words are still readable and also I'm not going to color really super heavy if you continue to color really really heavy over top of the text even with a wax pencil you can cover up some of the readability but I'm allowing myself to have all the fun contrast in the world in the scene over on the right hand side with these beautiful lush purple colors. But my sun and my sky are going to be in light colors. Now notice that I'm not putting that heavy black outline that you saw in the preview picture at the beginning. There's no heavy black outline here yet. I'm working with just the pencil line that I sketched it in with because I, I don't want to chance having that black pencil line in there and then drag some of that color into my yellow. It's going to keep my colors a little more pure. Now you can draw it with a pen if you want to before you start doing your coloring and then you're just filling it in but then sometimes your pencil goes over top of your black line and I don't like that look either. I like a nice nice sharp clear black line so adding it afterward really helps me to maintain that kind of a look. But you can see how, how beautiful the background is and when I add that full background color, it makes the white snow caps really pop, makes them really jump out, which is kind of cool. Now, one of the reasons that I chose Ecclesiastes 1 for my Earth Day verse is because it talks about how everything is meaningless, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. It just keeps repeating that in verse 1. And it says, what do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. And it goes on to talk about the sun and the wind and the streams and everything and how 
the planet is still going to be here and that um, the, the last verse in here says, no one remembers the former generations and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. And the reason that I picked this for Earth Day is because God was really reminding me that even though we could be short-sighted and we could think about our lifetimes, there are generations who are going to come after us because Jesus isn't going to come back until every last person who can come to him comes to him. He's waiting for absolutely everyone. And he knows how many generations are planned. We don't know. We have no idea if he's coming next year. And, you know, if he's coming next year, let's eat, drink, and be merry. But he's, he may not come next year. He may come in a 1,000 years. He may come in 10,000 years. We need to preserve this planet. So his plan to bring absolutely everyone possible can happen. That's part of our job and our responsibility while we're here on Earth is to, to keep this land and air livable and clean in as best we can. So I encourage you to do your part, do your part in both your personal life, in doing your recycling and not wasting our resources here on earth, taking good care of it, don't pollute. I, when I was a little girl, I won the earth, first Earth Day contest at my school for my little poster that I drew. And if you watch my Instagram, I'll probably post that again this year because I post that every single year on Earth Day. And yeah, take care of things, don't pollute, and encourage your community leaders to do the same and to institute policies that are going to be helpful in preserving our planet because that's important. We want this planet to house as many generations of the family of God as possible. So as you can see, the outlines I'm adding now are really making it jump because I can add a nice thick outline if I want to. You can't really add too well with a pen sometimes, depending on what pen and how heavy your pencil line is. So I'm using a black pencil and it also allows me to get kind of sketchy with it and I can sort of adjust my line as I go and I don't have to have one thin stroke that's going to be perfect. I'm not good at perfect strokes and making a perfect curve. So this kind of an idea allows me to be a little on the sketchy side. I can adjust based on where my coloring was. Maybe my coloring didn't go along the line that I drew in pencil in the first place. And I can adjust that using my black pencil. When my lines get over to the area where the, the scripture text is, I'll get a little bit lighter with them and sort of skip and stop and start to maintain that readability and then use just a little bit of a grayish line um, as I get over the, the text itself because I want to make sure I'll be able to read that later on. The last part to add is going to be my text, which reads, People come and go, but the earth, it was here already. The earth remains forever. And I dated it with my little date stamp for Earth Day 2018. Thank you so much for joining me. There's more videos here if you'd like to see them. You can also go visit my Bible Journaling Made Simple page with lots of sample art on it, lots of sketches and other things. And I will see you again next week. Thanks and God bless you.